Hey guys, Jim with Trevor here. So today I want to talk about the squat setup um, in part one of my how to squat series. So um, there'll be a second part coming out later on where we actually go through the squat movement itself, the eccentric and that concentric phase. But today we're just going to talk about the squat setup. So how, um, where you should place the bar, how to create the shelf um, with that bar setup, the workout, and then your brace and setting, so stability during your um, your brace. So those are the three areas that we'll be um, getting into today. And so um, it's quite an important area to be discussed, even though it is quite neglected. Um, your setup for the squat itself, because how you set up during the squat will help to dictate and will play a major factor in how the rest of your lift goes. Because if you are able to create a platform and a, create a foundation where you essentially you feel strong, you feel strong in that initial position, that's going to have a major carryover over into um, the actual lift itself. And that applies to a lot of lifts like for that bench press as well. If from that unrack position um, for the squat and your bench press, if you feel strong from the unrack and that bar feels easy in on your body or in the, in your palms because you've created a good foundation that it's going to carry over to the rest of your lift. Um, so let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is actually bar placement. So today we'll be going over a low bar squat because that's more specific to my niche. Um, so with your low bar squat, uh, low bar squat bar placement, it's um, I'm sure most of you know it's gonna um, sit a lot lower than a traditional high bar squat. So. Um, it's going to sit um, maybe an inch or two below below your traps, but this is something that can be manipulated and something that can be changed around depending on uh, lift up preference and torso length and um, the amount of tightness you can generate what's most advantageous for you. So all in all, it generally comes down to what you prefer and what's most effective for you. But as, as a whole in general, it's going to sit quite um, a significant amount lower than a traditional high bar squat. But before you even place your bar on your back, you're going to want to find your grip position with your hand placement. So this is going to uh, once again vary between lifter um, to lifter, uh, mostly depending on um, personal preference. But the key thing that it revolves around is shoulder mobility. So if I have greater shoulder mobility, then I'm going to be able to take a quite a very narrow grip with my hands. So if you can imagine that, that would be my bar placement, but simply I can't get this any lower. This is the position which that, um, that group with allows me to sit in and it's a very high bar position. It, it's literally my high bar position. So due to my lack of shoulder mobility there, I have to take a space out. So personally for me, um, I, I line my first thumb up with the first knurling and then that's, and I do, I do it for my, both my left and right side just to ensure symmetry um, with that bar placement. So this would be my personal group with position, but for other lifters, say you're a more heavyweight lifter looking in the 83 class, potentially with um, 83 and above, you're lacking a bit of shoulder mobility, then potentially you would take a wider grip. Whereas if you're a, a more lightweight lifter sitting maybe 74s or another, you would take a more narrower grip just because that's what would be most advantageous for you. So all in all, play around with your grip width. The most important thing to remember is to make sure you're symmetrical under. So make sure that whatever placement you take on one side, you do um, exactly on the other. Now after you've taken your grip width, you're going to get under the bar yourself and then you're actually going to find, you're going to shimmy around to find that optimal position where you, you can create a shelf to place that low bar on. So because a lot of lifters, when they, they come under, they jam, jam themselves under, or they might sit themselves too low or sit themselves too high, it's, it's important when you're just trying out find, trying to find a group, it's important to really kind of shimmy around and find that position where the bar sits comfortably on your back. So it's not actually um, bend, it's not actually your wrist placing it in position. It, it's sitting nicely on your back, but your wrists are there just to support it. Now, from this position, when you find, um, it's, it's hard to describe what that optimal position is, but play around with it, shimmy around, and you, you will definitely be able to find that position where the bar sits very comfortably. Now, once you find that position, what I actually like to do is I like to, I like to give this cue where I tell my lifters to pull your elbows back and down. And so what that does is it actually creates a shelf that helps create more of a shelf for that bar to sit on, so that will just further increase stability. From this point, you're going to take your unrack. When you unrack, it's important to know that you don't want to essentially, uh, essentially lift your back out of the bar like that because that's gonna, it's going to ruin your torso angle that you've worked so hard to create that tightness. It's going to negate that tightness and it's going to put, it's going to put a lot of stress on your back. So when with that unrack of that bar, you're essentially loading force into the ground to, to perform a mini lockout. So and you're, gonna, you're applying force, you're wedging force into the ground 
you know, applying force to that bar pops right off the rack. From here, we're gonna talk about your workout next. The workout is very important to remember that with almost everything we do, it's about stability and control. Now I see a lot of this, there's a pull on the rack, they'll, they'll come out, they'll do all this, they'll take a lot of steps and um, you can imagine that when there's weight on the bar, any momentum you, you create and you, as you shift around with any weight on your back, that's gonna be a, um, a very risky position. So what, what I like to do is after I've taken my unrack, I'm gonna perform three controlled steps. First with my dominant foot, first step, second step with my non-dominant, and then a third step to correct. That third step is just to ensure that I'm aligned myself, that I've aligned myself properly, because a lot of the times after you take that second step, you're not gonna be aligned. And so after that, you just wanna correct yourself and to make sure that everything is symmetrical, everything is about stability, everything is about control, everything is about symmetry across, a symmetry and balance across your body. So what's really important to drill with that lockout is to make sure you perform it in a, a, in a very controlled manner. So one, you're not wasting energy, but two, you're also stable and you're, you're not swinging around side to side where there's, there's a higher potential for risk. So that's step two done. Now I'm in my starting position. This is the position that I'll be using to perform my squat. So, but before we actually get to that, the, the next important thing is, brace, is stability throughout your brace. As you take your brace, essentially you're generating tightness and you're building up tension throughout the body. So after you take your brace, if you watch my bracing video, that sharp exhale and intake of air. But with, when we're bracing on a squat, what I like to combine with that is I like to do two things. As I perform that contraction of my stomach, I like to, um, once again, bring my elbows back and down. That's just to help uh, create tightness and correct any leakages that potentially happen during that walkout. Number two, I also, I like to um, essentially bring my chest down to my pelvis. So let me, let me talk about that more. When I say I like to bring my chest down to my pelvis, um, the reason I talk about, is, uh, talk about that is when you're in that starting position, a lot of times, where depending on a lot of variables such as for example if your shoulder mobility is lacking you're too tight you're a too type of group and then you t intake air too high that's going to cause your back to arch and that's going to cause you to go in a hyper extended position so what i like to do to counter that is i like to think this is my chest this is my pelvis i want to bring that chest down to my pelvis and so what that does is that ensures that i've got a flattened out back position so that's what i mean when i say to collapse that um, chest into the pelvis so let me go back into that starting position for you guys. The finding, finding that sweet spot, creating the shelf, wedging out of there, one, two, three step. This is my starting position. So from here, brace, uh, retract the, the elbows back and down, and then cut the pelvis at the same time. I'll do that in real time for you guys. Beautiful, so that's my starting position. Now, another thing that I want to talk about when we look at bracing and creating stability in that starting position is your pelvic control. Now, with a lot of lifters, almost all lifters out there, because of um, our, our day-to-day -day activities where um, I, I would guesstimate that a lot of people would be sitting um, in during day-to-day -day life, what happens is when you're sitting, constantly sitting in that flexed position of the hips, what that actually causes is an anterior pelvic tilt. So what that means is if I do it in an exaggerated motion, say this is my pelvis, um, my, my pelvis actually tilts forward like that. And so what that causes is a hyperextensional lordosis in my back that um, then carries over to a lot of day-to-day -day life just walking around. If you're experiencing back pains, that's a, that's a very likely reason that for why you're getting um, problems there. Now, when we talk about that in respect to with our squats, what happens is that in your walkout, uh, let me just get set up into position for you guys. So after you get into your, um, your pre-starting position, a lot of lifters, they'll be in a quite an anterior pelvic tilted position where they've got their arse shooting back, they've got um, the pelvis untucked and they've got a, an arch in their back. Now, I'm, I'm doing this in quite an exaggerated position, but this is what I'm talking about when I refer to pelvic control. Now, how I like to treat this is with, um, with our brace, so working this with into our brace and our shoulder retraction. As we brace, I like to actively tuck my pelvis in like so. So essentially, for lifters who um, are having a bit of problem with their pelvic control, I like to work in like cat cows or some yoga positions like that, where, where it helps you to play around and master control of your body. But essentially, what you want to do is from that untucked position, you want to you imagine that you've got a bucket of water at your pelvis, and right now, the water's spilling out my bucket. 
So how I like to treat that is if I tuck my pelvis in like that, if I drive it through into that neutral position, that water that bucket's gonna remain flat. So that's what I, that's another aspect to keep in mind is that if you do have an element of an anterior pelvic tilt where you start out with your hips untucked, remember that you want to work that in with your brace so that when you start that position, you're gonna be tucked in, in a very neutral position. Because when you squat with an, with an anterior pelvic tilt in an untucked position, uh, as you sink down into the hole, essentially, your starting position is going to be your end position. So as you squat down into the hole, your you're, um, arch in your back is just going to be exaggerated. It's going to be made worse. And your, your um, hips, your posterior chain won't be able to work as effectively. So that's another area to uh, keep in mind. Now, what's, what's also an important thing to remember is that when I've got weight on the bar, when I've got plates on the other side, this bar is gonna, is gonna be shifting from side to side. There's gonna be an element of movement that needs to be negated. So especially when you take that brace and when you, when you introduce movement throughout that body before you even squat, there's gonna be a high likelihood in 80% of cases, a very high likelihood that your bar is gonna shift around. So what's important to remember is after you take your brace and what I like to tell lifters is after you brace and everything is ready to set, just take that split second. Just hold it for a split second to let that bar settle uh, before you actually perform your movement. So it looks like this. And then you perform your movement. So that's um, the three, you sent, uh, pretty much the three key areas of your, your squat setup that are very important to get down pat to ensure you have a smooth um, squat. So I'll just go over the three things would be that initial bar placement and that initial retraction of the elbows back and down to create a very optimal shelf. And then the second thing would be a controlled and stable walkout leading in and where you find your position, you really root yourself into the floor. And that third thing would be um, control and stability throughout that brace. So that's all for me today, guys. Uh, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And um, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay tuned for part two where we actually, where we actually go through that eccentric and concentric phase of the lift. All right, take care.